Hello, beautiful soul family. Rebecca here, your vibe mentor. Welcome to another Monday Mastery, where I give you my take on the recent week's energies and advice on how to move forward. It has been an interesting couple of weeks, and this week finally is bringing a bit of a change, a bit of uh, relief. So do know that this is a timeless message. I will spend a couple of minutes kind of going over the solar weather, sometimes a little bit of astrology or Schumann resonance, and then we dive into the advice on how to move forward. So depending on when you find this, the message will be perfect for you. Again, it is a timeless message. So as far as the solar weather, luckily we didn't have a lot, which is interesting. Again, this is another theme for the last couple of weeks where the solar weather has been pretty mild, especially relative to a solar maximum period, which we are technically supposed to be in, although we don't fully know until we're six months out to be able to look back and say that was the peak. Um, but relative to recent years, because we hit solar maximum every 11 years, so far it is a very mild solar maximum, which is surprising. Um, but if you consider where we're at energetically and um, just the state of the world and the way things are going, there's a, a different level of intensity. It's not just solar weather that we're experiencing. So I'm not going to go through the day by day because it was so mild. Um, we had a on average, one M-class solar flare per day and anywhere from five to 10 C-class solar flares. So again, that is very mild relative to recent weeks and even especially uh, recent solar maximums. We did have an influx yesterday of four M-class solar flares, um, but I would say the biggest um, measurable intensity throughout the week was the Schumann resonance. We actually had spikes just about every single day and we had a big spike um, on uh, Sunday, Saturday, somewhere in there. Don't quote me on it. Um, definitely go check out. And by the way, I am monitoring the Italian Schumann resonance uh, measurement devices. If you follow the Russian one, you may see something different. So um, as I've mentioned in the past, the Schumann resonance can be correlated to things like lightning storms or just thunderstorms in general. I guess thunder and lightning are the same thing, but um, oftentimes it can also correlate to solar weather. Um, and yet this past week, we had some spikes that were not necessarily correlated to either of those, uh, which tells us that um, the collective energy was pretty amplified. Um, we have seen correlation in the past of um, humanity's excitement relative to the Sch Schumann resonance spike. So um, I think that's something we're all still feeling into and figuring out, um, but we'll put that on the shelf for now and just say that the intensity um, that we felt this week, again, did not correlate necessarily like it has in the past with solar weather. Um, there is um, some debate around uh, the retrogrades, whether it was Neptune or Saturn and and some of the astrology, um, but I personally felt that it was it was outside of all of these um, effects, that this was a, a human experience. And um, depending on the day of the week, there was some pretty heavy and dense energy. Um, for me, I felt it on Tuesday. I know a lot of people um, felt it uh, throughout the week, whether it was Monday um, through about Thursday, but it, on Thursday, things started to really calm down. It felt as though we were grounding um, into a new space almost. And when I look back at the recent weeks, we have had very heavy, challenging energy since June 11th. Um, so we're, we're close to a month of pretty sustained, um, challenging energy. I prefer the term challenged instead of heavy or dense or negative um, because it does serve a purpose. It, it um, We go through these phases where it feels like we we dive into the underworld to go out or go in and, and gather up some of this old material that needs to be addressed. And we're, we're in the thick of it. We're really fighting a battle, a spiritual battle um, to, to understand what it is that we are dealing with, to be honest with ourselves, to make the shifts and changes that we need to make, and then to step back into in a more aligned, appropriate path for ourselves. Uh, it definitely felt as though um, we were being adjusted. Um, I, I got the um, sort of analogy or visual of a chiropractor adjustment um, where, you know, he yanks your neck and everything cracks and it can feel a little bit scary in that moment where everything's cracking and there's sort of this um, violent jolt of your body. It that's I wish it was as fast as a chiropractic adjustment. Um, but what we've been through over the last uh, three four weeks 
has felt a lot like um, sort of the the rough cracking of, of a Cairo adjustment. So really look at what has changed for you over the last four weeks. Um, be brave and comment below. I will share my story in a minute. Um, I'm noticing that this is sort of part of the theme is, is the, the light workers or the, the heart centered beings, those of us who are conscious, awake and aware how we have a tendency to hide and our, our light is no good if we are hidden under a basket and we are tucked away in a closet. So be brave enough to start to comment your truth, your story, not just on this video, but in other places, start to share what you have gone through. Um, let people know what has changed for you. What are you wrestling with? Um, there is benefit, not just for those who read and, and see your comment, but also for yourself to, to show up, to be brave, to raise your hand and say, Hey, you know, this video changed my life, saved, saved my marriage, whatever it is, and know that people are going to see that there's, there's a healing that will happen in you as you do that as well. Um, along with the Cairo adjustment, it also felt again, like train check, train check. Oh my goodness. Train track shifting. That's a tough one. Say that 10 times. Um, and it also felt a little bit like we were sort of on the verge or the edge of something almost dangerous. It felt like sort of uh, teetering on the edge of a cliff um, that we we had we had started moving in a direction that wasn't quite right for us. It felt a little bit like eclipse energy too, where it it's this adjustment that says, no, you're off track. You've got to get back over here. Um, and some phrases that came to mind when when um, taking notes and preparing for this was um, having a, a minister for a father um, who was not necessarily um, in his humblest state would use these phrases more so as sort of a, a, a battering rod to beat us over the head as kids, right? But the the statement, the rod and staff, they comfort me. I, I later in my healing journey came to understand that that statement was actually made as um, a reference to a shepherd, that a shepherd who is in charge of and responsible for caring for the sheep and keeping them safe and loving them would use the end of the staff, that hook that is on the end of the staff is actually designed to hook around the neck of a lamb or a sheep that is walking too close to the edge of a rock or a cliff or a hole or something that could hurt them. And, and it's, so what that's saying is the comfort of the rod and the staff means that we can trust that we will be pulled back from things that are going to hurt us. And that felt a little bit like what we just went through, that it's not awesome to be grabbed around the neck and be yanked back from a hole or the edge of a cliff, but it certainly would have been much worse had we not been. And then this brought to mind the other phrase that my uh, beautiful father used to use, and that was the to spare the rod was to spoil the child. And it again was another reference to um, shepherding sheep and keeping them safe. The rod was considered the staff and to spare that rod would have meant to allow the sheep to fall off the edge of the cliff or to go to places they shouldn't. And that in the being brought back, we're being trained to stay on the safe path. Right. And so while what we have just experienced was not super fun, we again can have gratitude and appreciation and peace on the other side of it, knowing that we have been brought back of, from the edge of something that um, was not awesome for us, or we've been readjusted to a more aligned, appropriate path. Things were corrected, things were purged, things were released, things were cleansed. Um, certainly new clarity and insight and some we'll call it downloads. Um, I find it interesting, this conversation of three-dimensional versus five-dimensional and ascension and heaven on earth or new earth, all of these different phrases um, that dance around in different communities, they can seem very um, ungrounded. Um, they can seem very aspirational or lofty or uh, woo woo. And so I often want to ground my messages and my understanding and my perspective in, um, in the world that we live in, right? Because this is where we chose to incarnate, right? This is where we chose to come to. And so to put that in grounded terms is just a level of consciousness, a level of awareness, right? What am I open to? What am I understanding of? What am I conscious of? 
And so when we say that these moments, these recent weeks of difficulty and challenge, they bring in new perspective, new insight, new awareness, a new ability to see ourselves in a different, more honest and truthful way. And so when, when things are shoved in our face and we're forced to acknowledge or address things that we wanted to look away from, we wanted to hide from, it causes us, if we do it honestly and, and openly and with a willing growth mindset, we can look at ourselves and say, you know what, my perspective was, was not aligned to the truth or the highest level of love. I preferred that right? Truth is love and love is truth. And if I'm really honest with myself, I need to shift the way I approach people. I need to shift the way I perceive people, right? And, and so I'm, I'm offering this as a suggestion to you to the only way that we can move into higher levels of consciousness or become more self-aware or become closer to the the God self that we were created to be, to move closer to the divine plan for our lives is to be honest with ourselves and allow ourselves to do sort of that perspective dance as we move around a thing and find alignment to truth and love. And sometimes that requires self-honesty. Sometimes that requires acknowledging that I might need to be more loving to this other group of people that I have somehow justified not being loving to in the past, right? We as, as people who are committed to the highest path, people who are committed to living a Christ-like life, people who are committed to being heart-centered and, and leading with love, we, from an outside perspective, many people will look in and say, you're judgmental you're a goody two shoes. You think you're better than everyone else. We want to live in love and light. And yet it is true to some degree at some stages, we hold on to anger. We hold on to judgment. We hold on to resentment. We separate ourselves and try to elevate ourselves over others. And that is not the way of love. And that was something that I had to be honest with myself about that I am extremely loving and caring and supportive of all of my clients and all of my community members and all of my followers. And yet I had held one or two people in my mind's eye as not deserving of that part of me. I was angry at them. I was hurt by them. I allowed resentment to keep me separate from them. I allowed myself to judge them and say, well, you know, they're not focused on the path. They're not growing. So I get to separate them out. And this applies collectively, globally to all of us that we, we withhold love in certain areas and give love in others when the truth and love, the highest level of love is to love everyone and to judge no one, to love unconditionally, right? So we don't get to decide who is deserving of love. We don't get to say, oh, they're awake and aware. And so they qualify for my love, right? We have, we have to really check anger and resentment towards others and start to choose to, to give them love as well. The, the isolation and the separation of the, the heart-centered community is, is one of the biggest reasons it's a pretty general statement, so I'm not going to say the biggest reason, right? But it is one major reason why the world is still struggling because it is the love that we have to give that is going to create oneness and unity, compassion, understanding, the coming together that is needed for the healing of the world, right? It, if you look at sort of what is the description of love, I think I covered that this in last week's video, but the love is patient, love is kind, um, phrase, paragraph, verse, however you want to say it. There's a statement that says, love keeps no record of wrongs and it always protects. Love is the answer. Love is what we are seeking. Love is everything we need. And so we can only receive that which we give. And if we give in limited quantities or to limited groups of people, we will receive limited love. We want unlimited love, unconditional love. We are called to love all people, period, period, no matter what they've done, 
no matter if they are the evilest people on planet Earth, no matter if they return our love, it is possible to give love and still keep yourself safe. It is possible to be loving from a soft place and still be safe. You don't have to be armored or hard. It is possible to give love from a distance. You don't have to hurt yourself to give love. But we are called to give love to all people, period. That is the name of the game. Unity and oneness comes from love, period. Remember, hurt people hurt people. And every single thing a person do does comes from a belief that they have to do that thing to keep themselves safe. Her people need love more than anything else. And it is our anger and our resentment and our isolation that continue to perpetuate the problem. We have to show love to the ones who hurt us. And when you soften towards them, I can guarantee you will see a softening in them as well. Now, don't expect immediate results. Your love is like a seed. You plant it, it's under the ground. It's germinating. It's thinking, it's preparing, it's getting ready to pop its head up. But if you consistently continue to give love and hold the faith and the belief that that love is going to be everything everyone needs, it will return dividends. Okay, remember anger begets anger. Resentment is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Also remember that... Um, expectation is like premeditated resentment, right? So to have expectation or to hold resentment or to hold anger towards another person is actually hurting you. And I'm sure you've noticed if you say harsh words towards someone either in their face or behind their back, you feel like crap. There are, there are stress hormones that are released. The brain has to match in chemistry the thought that you just fed it. And so as you think something negative about someone, you are hurting yourself. Yes, we all know we're all one and we're all connected. And somehow we're able to just pretend that that doesn't really matter. And so I'm going to talk crap about you behind your back and no one will be the wiser. But guess what? That's not true. We all feel it. We all are paying the price. And the only way for us to move forward out of this chaotic place out of the struggle and the, the harsh environment that the world is in today is to sweep in front of our own door. The only thing that you can do is control yourself. So start with love. Love yourself. Focus on your healing. Address your traumas. Get to know the, the spiritual realm. Understand spiritual warfare. Start to fight to take your life back so that you can restore your energy to a place of being able and capable of love. If you find that you are energetically so taxed that you don't have the capacity to not only love yourself, but enjoy your life and love others, then we need to work on what is, what is draining your energy. It's not other people. I know it seems like it is, but after going through my own trauma healing journey, I can tell you it was my trauma, my thoughts, my beliefs, my toxic internal environment that was draining my energy, my thoughts about other people. Any negative thought is extremely draining. It's really important to remember that everything you do, say, think, everywhere you go, everything you eat, everything you ingest is either draining you or feeding you. And I do this because if you look at a Taurus field, this is the way the energy moves. You, We have to understand the, my favorite phrase lately, energetic tax of life. But start within first. That food that you eat, is it taxing you or is it feeding you? That thing that you think, is it taxing you or is it feeding you? That person that you have thoughts about, are you taxing them or are you feeding them? Because inadvertently you are also doing the same to yourself. Let's get really intimately clear on what is draining us and what is feeding us. And I promise you this, at the heart of it all is our energy. How much energy do you have? That is what the brain is for. That is what the nervous system is for, is to help us survive. 
right? Our brain and our nervous system's number one job is to keep us alive. And keeping us alive means management of energy. How much energy do I have? Do I have enough energy to breathe and to digest my food and to beat my heart? I sure hope so, because that's like the bare minimum. Then as we heal trauma and we move into love and connection, which is the highest state of our nervous system, then we start to understand, I have a little bit more energy to love on other people. I have a little bit more capacity to tolerate people who aren't loving. This really is about regaining our energy so that we have the capacity to move through life the way we were designed to in our highest divine purpose and timing. Alignment to who we were made to be by the divine. Okay, got a little off, off notes here. So let me come back. And just remember, any negative thought comes with stress hormones, creates disease in the body, drains your energy. Uh, forgiveness is not just for the other person, is primarily for you so that you can move into peace and growth and healing. And as you do that for yourself, you're then able to give that to the other. I do want to clarify, I struggle with everything's on a spectrum, right? So self-love, self-care. Yes, it's important, especially if you are in a fawn or free state and you have elevated someone or something else is above you. And this is the threat. You are the prey. It is the predator. And it, it somehow is, it has elevated status over you. We need to equalize things. We need to bring you up off the ground and bring them down to equal, but it is not the other way that you are superior to the other. This There is a, a very dangerous propensity towards selfishness in the teachings of put yourself first, take care of yourself, only what you want, only what you need, only what feels good to you. That's dangerous. We are here to be of service. Yes, bring yourself off the ground, equal to others. We are all one in the same, equal of love, but don't become selfish. Your fulfillment, your happiness, your purpose will come through service to others. And it can be done from a healthy place. Yes, take care of yourself. Yes, heal. Yes, nourish yourself. Yes, have positive thoughts about yourself. But remember, it's a spectrum. Make sure we're balanced because it very much is a trauma response to string, swing from one extreme to the other, from complete selflessness and self-deprecation and self-abandonment all the way over to ego and all about me and selfishness. We want to be in the middle, right? Let's be like the tree pose that in yoga where we're, we're balancing back and forth, just like the vagus nerve, we're balancing back and forth between activation and rest and digest. We're balancing back and forth between service and self-care. Okay. Service to others is the name of the game. All right. So yes. Notice you suffer when you send hate. We are all one. They're just acting to survive. Um, your love, when you start sending love to others, you will start to see them soften. And it can be really difficult if you have not addressed unhealed trauma. It will be extremely difficult to try to force yourself to move into that. So there's a progression here. And that's why I offer free 30-minute sessions. This is not a, a this is this is my life purpose. Your purpose is my purpose. And for you to step into your purpose, it requires healing. So start with the trauma healing, regain your energy, regain your capacity and tolerance for life so that you can hold joy and be of service to others, so that we can send love to people who are not very loving. And this is probably the most important piece of all of this guidance this week is, is to be Christ-like, is to be unconditionally loving, but also to be unconditionally loving will require a relationship with Christ that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot do this. I could not do this on my own. My story was that I have a partner, a uh, person I have married twice that I'm not currently married to. We have struggled. Some people would, you know, call it the twin flame, whatever thing doesn't matter. We, we've had a lot of conflict. We've had a lot of difficulty. We have created a lot of toxicity between us. And I have had to put him in a position of not deserving my love, not being safe. And yet when I acknowledged that I was being loving to everyone else, but him, and that I needed to soften. I needed to put down the resentment. I needed to forgive. I needed to let go of the anger towards him. In my doing that, it is created amending. 
I am seeing a different version of this person. I am seeing the version that I always wanted to see. And it's not by my own strength. I couldn't do it. It required weeks upon weeks of unconditional love, unconditional forgiving, refusing to look at the past, believing that this shift is happening for everyone, not just you. And relationships are the name of the game. Connection, unity, oneness is the goal. There is not a single person that is off limits. And I know people are not going to like that, but I have to say the truth, right? So ask to know, ask to create, ask to have an intimate relationship with Yeshua. Okay. Get to know Jesus. And I know this was the hardest one for me. I, I having that difficult relationship with a pastor for a father who was also a narcissist who created a lot of trauma in me that I had to heal from. I wanted to, to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but slowly, but surely I started to realize the peace that I seek comes from the God I was created by comes through the knowing and the understanding of Jesus Christ. And that, that was scary for me to, to feel like, uh, you know, I'm falling back into the brainwashing of the church, but this is different. It's not the church. It's not organized, structured power and control. This is the relationship with my creator that I was built for, made for, that I exist for, right? And so I had a beautiful experience right before I had been feeling called to soften into my partner, been feeling called to let go of the anger, to put that down, been feeling called to to have full alignment and integrity, which is really important to me. And, and I literally, as I sat at church on Sunday morning, because I'm a spiritual person who goes to church and I will fully admit the truth of who I am. I consider myself sort of a new Christian or a metaphysical Christian, however you want to see it. But I had this vision of Christ reaching in and literally similar to what I experience and I offer to my clients in those sessions. And I'm just now realizing that where my heart was healed, that my heart was held by the hands of Christ. And that literally happened two days before, we'll say the shit went down, <laughs> that caused me to realize the edge of the cliff that I was standing on. And I will say that I could not have stepped into the unconditional love and the healing that I was being called to without the strength of Christ, because there were moments where it was too big and it was too scary and it was too painful and it was too much. And I wanted to walk away. And all of those teachings of take care of yourself and put yourself first and protect yourself. Those were the ones that came to mind that would have caused me to leave. And yet on the other side of forgiveness after forgiveness, after forgiveness, and prayer after prayer after prayer and unconditional love and the knowing that the guidance that I received, tapping into guidance and asking, is this the right path? Is this what you want from my life? And hearing very clearly the answer, yes, over and over and over and over, I stuck with it and it was worth it. And I trust that this example or this story will also apply to you in some way in your life. There is some relationship out there as you're listening to this, you are feeling called to soften into that person, to let go of the resentment, to let go of the anger, to step into unconditional love and forgiveness. And as I was sort of healing my relationship with Christ, or really it started, like I said, it started with understanding energy and then God and then angels. And Christ was the last piece for me because I just, I didn't understand if I have a relationship with God, how does Christ come into play? And I, I asked for many, many months, help me see the, you know, God help me understand how you want me to see Jesus and coming to that understanding for myself, for myself, not because the church said, not because the Bible said, but because the energy of that person came to me and has made itself known to me, I now understand Christ is here to help us understand how to navigate, how it's kind of like the instruction manual. He's the one that helps us see how does this all work? How does it all come together? Because I, I still, and, and this may be a lifelong journey for me, but still understanding 
energy is real. Manifestations real. Um, synchronicities are real. Numbers mean things. Those are all part of the metaphysical world. And yet Christ is real. And absolutely my creator is the best thing that has ever happened to me. And having intimacy with the divine makes life worth living. I understand. So I'm like, how do these things coexist? And I have to read the note because the way it comes through, it says he helps us understand how all of this comes together. The energy, the quantum mechanics, the psychology, the neuroscience, and the biology of our highest selves, which equals unity and oneness. So for any of you who have had a question of how does Christ play into this or what is my relationship, I encourage you to just ask to know that energy. Ask to know him. Ask him to come to you and to speak to you. Ask for guidance on the relationship that needs healing in your life. Ask for strength to forgive, to tolerate those who are not awake and aware or measuring up to your definition of where they should be at. Ask for patience and unconditional love and trust and faith that they are on their path. It is not up to us to control them. Control is another trauma response. Let go of control. If you're going to control something, work on yourself. You got plenty. <laughs> you got plenty to worry about. Let God, let Christ handle the others. Your job is love, connection, unity, oneness, and healing of yourself. And with that, it feels complete. I love you, my beautiful friends. Happy Monday. I will see you on the next one. Namaste.